four sets of valve springs. I have two sets of outer valve springs and two sets of inner valve springs. Um, I'm now testing and noting all of the spring pressures so that I can mix and match to see uh, what spring pressures we would need. I've um, chosen two camshafts that I would like to use so I'm testing um, all the valve strings to see if I can get the correct pressures with all the valve springs that I have. I don't have a valve spring tester uh, but this is what I came up with. So this is my drill press and my bathroom scales and it works quite well. I'll show you the process of how I'm measuring um, the valve spring pressures. It's quite easy, only one thing that you need is something to put the force down and something to measure it. Now I have this drill press, which has a small metal um, table and I put a piece of wood on there to um, mount my bathroom scales. So these fit on here, this is a valve spring and I got a little piece of wood and I can I've completely unscrewed the collet so that it's uh, the pointy end is out and this can capture the valve spring so it really doesn't escape and this is quite safe because uh, the spring can't shoot anywhere. Now I've raised the table up so that I can put the valve spring in and I can slide underneath the little piece of wood so now the spring is completely stuck on here so there's uh, no movement up and down so everything uh, pressure that I'm putting down is acting on the spring so the only thing that the scales now are doing they're measuring the force on the spring at the moment is zero because the spring's not in tension there's um, a scale on here that shows me how far I'm depressing the drill now I've measured uh, the free length of the spring and the installed length and then uh, we have to compress it a little bit further to get the spring pressure at full lift. So I have all these specs so I know how far uh, we need to press the, the drill chuck down. So for these springs, I'll look at my notes, the free length is 53 millimeters and the installed height is 38 and a half millimeters so uh, we have to put it 15 degrees down around about so we can just depress this to 15 like so and we can read on the scales it's 22.4 kilograms and then we notice in our little book if we then want to check the pressures at the full lift so we have to depress it 25.9 millimeters. So we're going 20, 25.9. So it's 40.7 kilograms at full lift for that cam camshaft specification. So this is a really easy way to check it. We can pull the spring out, put the next one in. So uh, that we're going to ch check all the springs uh, on all the different pressures and we're going to notice and then we can do some calculations on what we need but this is a really easy solution and uh, you don't have to buy a spring tester you just need a drill press and bathroom scales and then there are a couple of variations that we do because we can add a washer that adds a millimeter so it will subtract a millimeter from the installed height and we'll test that pressure and then we'll do the uh, pressures at full lift with and without the washer so we'll have a lot of measurements now we can take an average between all of the springs and to see if all of the springs are correct then we do the same for all of the outer and all of the inner springs you can see that I mark these by color so that I can keep them apart and once that we have all of the measurements then we can um, see if we can get a combination that works well for what we need I've calculated out all of the different combinations of valve springs and I have one combination that's quite close so when we use a blue and a green valve spring we have a fitted strength of 42 kilograms 
and then when we go to our um, maximum lift then we're going at 83 or 85 kilograms and um, it's a little bit high we would are aiming for 40 kilograms uh, at fitted length and about uh, 78 kilograms at maximum lift so it's a little bit too high um, I could use these and maybe cut um, the spring seat a little bit to uh, release a little bit of tension uh, the second option is that I'm using a combination of a yellow and a green spring which will give um, 33 or 35 if I have a little bit more pressure on there and we're going to get uh, 73 or 76 kilograms at full lift now we're going to take a look at our camshaft and this is the one that came out of our toner engine but I had uh, several different camshafts um, that I could use to regrind. So this one uh, just has a Renault 16 camshaft profile. So it's really tame, um, not a lot of power, not a lot of lift. And we want to have a more aggressive camshaft to go in our engine. So I took a couple of my camshafts and I went to CAT cams. And this is a company that makes forgings for a lot of different uh, camshafts and also for the uh, Renault Crossflow engine. And initially I thought that maybe one of their forgings could be used uh, to make a new billet camshaft for my engine. But the orientation of the lobes is different and therefore uh, we couldn't uh, regrind them. Um, the difference is because the uh, order of the valves is different so now we have uh, exhaust intake ex intake exhaust and uh, on the cross flow uh, they're already paired so intake exhaust intake exhaust etc the profiles are the same uh, but the lobes are uh, in a different order so um, they agreed to regrind one of my original camshafts and while my camshafts were there they also tested my uh, reground lifters um, for harness but uh, they all checked out so the harness is okay um, the shape is correct so I just need to make sure that these uh, don't rust before we put these in the engine then um, I took several of my camshafts there and uh, we didn't choose the one that came out of the engine originally because um, the bearings have worn a little bit also the gear for our oil pump uh, didn't look too great also the tops of all the lobes uh, weren't perfect and one of the camshafts that I have from um, a 697 engine so not the uh, Lotus engine but uh, just the Renault 16 engine this was uh, a lot better I'll put these next to each other and they're completely interchangeable and they reground this to a much more aggressive profile and it's also a little bit more aggressive than the uh, original Lotus profile so the original Lotus profile had a 9.14 millimeters of lift and this one um, has more than 10 about 10 and a half millimeters of lift and at the valve uh, there's also a little bit longer duration uh, all in all we'll have good power from about three to seven and a half thousand rpm so it's quite aggressive um, but this paired with a very light car and completely uh, programmable fuel injection and ignition uh, it won't be an up, uh, a problem you can also see that the gear looks a lot sharper than um, on this one 
So uh, camshaft settled. I also spoke with the people at CAT cams to um, decide what to do with uh, the valve springs because we have a couple of different combinations um, that we can use to get close to these values that they specify and they specify uh, 40 kilograms at the fitted height and then about uh, 78 kilograms at full lift and um, it doesn't really matter between the three combinations that we have so I'm going to uh, take a second look at what we have but probably I'll go with uh, the one without any of the shims it's a bit easier to assemble uh, but I'll, I'll double check everything one thing to keep in mind when regrinding the camshafts to a higher lift is you don't want to undercut the core of the camshaft um, sometimes if you really uh, cut deep then you can uh, undercut the core because you want um, the lobe to stand proud of the core at all times because the lifters will contact this and because uh, the lifter is offset to one side the lifter will rotate because uh, it always has contact on one side so the lifter will rotate uh, on the lobe if the lobe is undercut so that the core stands proud of the of the lobe uh, the rotation will stop and then you will destroy uh, your lifters and your camshaft within a thousand kilometers so that's something that you have to be really careful for uh, at cat cams they check this all and it's all okay so um, now we'll put this to the side and then we can um, use our spec sheet for our camshaft to design uh, our pistons with our desired compression ratio once we have all uh, our um, parts in stock now we can start to reassemble the engine so I think we can uh, end this video here I hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions or comments just post them below or send me an email to my website and I hope I see you next time Goodbye.